last several weeks, a fantastic inhuman criminal, the gigantic Steel Man, has terrorized the nation. Invulnerable to attack, the unstoppable metal criminal rampages through the nation on a devastating path of death and destruction despite all attempts to halt him. A path heads straight towards the Army's secret weapon development center. Come in, Jerry. Any sign of him yet? No, sir. Are you really sure he'll try it? Yes. I'm positive he'll go after the new molecular disintegrator. And no security system in the world can be considered safe against the superpowers he's developed. Now remember, if you spot him, call me immediately. Don't worry, I will. But I still don't think anyone can break in here, even Steel Man. What? Steel Man? You were wrong, Sales. Jerry? Come in, Jerry. Can you hear me? <laughs> Something's wrong. I'd better signal the guards. Blast it! I've got to get out of here. You win this round, Super President. But sales will make sure that I win the next and final one. Any word yet, Commander? Uh, no, sir. Wait a second, sir. There's an urgent call for you on the speaker screen. I thought it might be you. What have you done with Jerry? Look for yourself. Are you all right, Jerry? <laughs> yes, sir. And tell Uncle Hardy not to worry. I'll... That's enough. I'm setting the timer on this laser gun for one hour, Norcross. If the guards are not removed from the security vault by then, sales will die. Tell Uncle Hardy. What can that mean? Hardy. Andy Hardy. Laurel and Hardy. That's it. There's a point, Laurel, not far from Castle Falls. Point Laurel. That iron works. I've never noticed that before. I think I'd better have a look in there. Strange. The door's open. Your time is almost up, Sales. <laughs> Soon I will have the secret molecular disintegrator. This looks like a prison. You were correct, Super President. It is a prison. Yours. This time my trick worked, but unlike me, you won't escape. <laughs> These walls are made of an impenetrable metal element I alone have discovered. The heat of spinning will melt the joints together so that nothing, not even air, can ever escape. I'd say that your fate was sealed, Super President, forever. Sorry I can't stay, Sales. But I have some unfinished business at the secret weapons base. I've got it. Maybe air won't pass through, but acid might. I'll change my molecular structure to acid. in time. Jerry! Oh, that was close. But Steel Man got away. And he's heading for the secret weapons base. Come on. President will mind if I borrow the Omnicar, do you? <laughs> he stole the Omnicar. You'll never catch him now. No, but I know something that will. Over there, that magnet.
It's not strong enough. I'll have to change my body into electricity and triple the voltage. Something's wrong. I can't move. He's out. I've got remote control of the Omnicar, sir. <laughs> and here he comes. Here's the Omnicar, sir. Good. I'm sure Steel Man won't mind hanging on while we call the military police. Uh, that's right, Commander. A and don't worry about Steel Man getting away. He's decided to stick around for a while. <laughs> Jerry, five villages in our tracking station on the island of Tanatu attacked within the space of five days. We've got to find out who or what is responsible for the attacks. I agree, sir. But there isn't time for a formal investigation, and we've got too much at stake out there to ignore what's happening. Tanatu may be a fly speck in the Pacific, but it's important to our secret defense plans. So the fewer who know about this, the less chance for a security leak. Exactly. Prepare the Omnicar. We better handle this alone. Jim. Too quiet, Jerry. Like the jungle is waiting for something to happen. Notice anything, Jerry? Still not a sound, Jim. That's just it. Even the insects and birds are quiet. And they're the first to know when something's wrong. What could it be, sir? There's no wildlife on this atoll. But something attacked those natives. Hmm. I'm going to have a look. Wait for me here. Uh-oh. Manga Duhala! Manga Zamak! Zamak, Andola! Oh, am I ever glad to see you? I, I think. You will not be glad for long. Kama Sodala Angkor! Take him to our place of sacrifice. We will offer him to the monster of the atoll as a peace offering. I do not like it, Matuba. The white men have always been our friends. They keep us from our true destiny, chief. And the monster god of the atoll is angry with his people for not driving the white man away. We must sacrifice to keep him content. We would do better to drive out the monster. You are chief, but I am high priest. Shamba Doro! Doro! Doro, Doro! They have 
Jerry. Wait. Who? Who is that? Oh, you couldn't have timed it better, Jim. The intruder interferes with our sacred rights. Seize him! I offer myself in place of my friend. No, Jim! But you must promise that if my powers are greater than your flames, you will no longer attack those who are your true friends. Greater than flame? Uh, a meaningless promise. Agreed! Put him to the torture! Now to change my structure to water. His power is greater than ours. We must live up to our agreement. Free him and do him honor. It is time to call Kambula the monster. behind the attacks. I'm sure our scientists can tranquilize the monster and prevent more tragedy. So all along it was the witch doctor who controlled the monster and provoked the attacks. In order to keep his hold over the tribe. He was afraid our influence would be stronger than his. It all worked out though, thanks to Super President. in the capital, a distinguished visitor has vanished, obviously the victim of abductors. You are helpless, Premier Drums, in the power of me, Konda, and my great hypnotic Eye of the Condor. Ah! Soon I shall capture the minds of kings and presidents too. Returning each of you to your position of power to help me plunder a world that scorns the very thought of mutants such as me, Kanda, the Condor King. At the desk of the highest office in the land, President Norcross and his trusty aide, Jerry Sayers, have just been informed of Premier Drawn's abduction. No traces of Premier Drawn, Mr. President. Yes, but remember that lucky coin I gave him, Jerry, the day he arrived? Maybe that is going to help us find him. We'll need the Omnicar. Quickly, Jerry, on the double. Uh, Mr. President, if you mean as long as Premier Drons is carrying that coin, we're beaming in on him? There's a high-powered micro-unit transmitter hidden inside the coin. I've given them to many important visitors the signal. It's changed. Its point of origin is somewhere down there. Better stay here, Jerry. No telling what I'll find down there. Be careful, Jim. Yeah. 
you, you turkey! Let me go! Aha! You see, Premier Drums? You are in my power. My pilot will return you now, but your mind will remain forever under the power of the Condor's eye and my control. We'll see about that. And remember, if your imprisoned thoughts ever fail to do my telepathic bidding, we will bring you back and let you regret your misdeed in the flames of my fury. Not so fast, Bertie. Uh-uh. Tell your guards to stay right where they are, or... Ah, yes! Guards, make no move! Jim! Help! Jerry! Jim! Oh, no. I've got to catch him. <laughs> Rescue for you, Premier Drums. If the strong one tries again. Oh no. What's he up to? Get him! Fool intruder! Stop! Make no move to rescue Drums, or he dies in my pit of flames! No. It's your insidious power that must die. Save him! No, no, you will pay! Pay! Destroy them, slave! With guns, bullets, shoot, fire! Slave, I order you! No. Oh, I... I'm, I'm, I'm free now. The spell of the condor's eye is broken. I'm... I'm free. <laughs> Fools! You cannot stop me! <laughs> I will rule yet! <laughs> My genius will create another condor's eye! No, you won't, Birdie. It's time I plucked your pin feathers. You are brainless, too, wingless one. You seal your doom up here. No one can match a condor's flight. <laughs> I'll carry you to an airless death on the edge of space. You mean you'll try, my feathered friend. Have you ever tried carrying a man whose molecules have suddenly turned to lead? Suggest you wrap him well for quick delivery to the nearest law officers of your country. And I'd say here's the right gift trapping for these gorillas. We have also arranged your return transportation, Premier Drons. But uh, I am still confused. How did you know where to find me? What could have brought you to this remote place? <laughs> oh, let's just say it was the flip of a coin, Premier Drons. Sales speaking. Good afternoon, Mr. Sales. Can you guess who this is? 
I know who it sounds like, but he's behind bars. <laughs> Where is your president's top secret Omnicar? What, what do you know about the Omnicar? It is in imminent danger of being stolen. You're lying. So, Professor de Cordo has escaped this call of his. Yeah, it may be a trick. I'd better play safe and check it out. I already have. With you as my hostage, your president will think twice about having me shot down. And now that I have this fantastic machine, I shall destroy enough of your defense installations to render your country helpless to attack by... <laughs> my present employers. at the destruction of your country's defense sails. This unidentified flying object has already destroyed two of our most important installations, Mr. President. I urgently recommend calling out the air command, sir. Yes? This is Professor DiCordo. Is your friend Jerry Sales. If you dare attack, he will die. Don't listen to him, Mr. President. You've got to attack. The Cordo's got Jerry. Gentlemen, there will be no attack on the UFO for the present. Mr. President, we can't let that UFO destroy our total military capability. I am still Commander-in-Chief, General. My order stands, but the UFO will have only one hour's grace. If it is not apprehended by then, your tactical air command will destroy it. I can hardly believe my ears. It's... it's as if the president were on their side. <laughs> Not a single plane dares to try to stop me. Super president. No planes, De Cordo, but someone's coming up to pay you a little visit. Whoever it is, he'll go down as fast as he came up. He's aiming my own blasters at me. this cat and mouse game much longer. If I ever hope to stop De Cordo before our planes attack, I've got to get inside the Omnicar. In seven minutes, the hour will be up. Give up, De Cordo. Never. Watch your country's naval installations go up in smoke. Something's going up to Cordo, but not what you think. Help! He's had enough. Just in time, Jim. Let's hope so, Jerry. We've got to get away before the Air Force finds us. 
the hour is up. Attack the UFO. Jim, our plane's at three o'clock. An odd feeling, Jerry, running away from your own Air Force. with UFO. If we can make it through the pass up ahead, we might be able to get away. Report negative contact with UFO. Now that Decordo is behind bars again, Mr. President, what happened to the advanced design machine he used? And how was DeCordo captured? I'd say I was about the last person in the country who could answer you, gentlemen. is working intently at his desk in the presidential mansion as his close companion, Jerry Sales, answers the emergency phone. It's that report from Indesia, sir. That freak invasion of locusts they're having has wiped out their entire grain crop. The estimate is that half the population will starve to death if they don't get help in a hurry. Right, Jerry. Inform the Prime Minister that we'll ship everything we can right away. Yes, sir. With news of the promised grain, the nation of Indesia rejoices. But in the secret headquarters of Hassan al Batani, a brilliant but embittered scientist, a different mood prevails. That blasted meddler! The people will never support our revolution! The people will never receive that food! Prepare the machine! We are taking a little trip! Several days later, new national storage facilities at Gardnerville. <laughs> Come, my little flying friends. Your dinner is ready. In the next few days, the vast horde of insects strikes again and again at the key mills and granaries where most of the nation's grain supplies are stored. Meanwhile, in the presidential mansion, look at this map, Jerry. First, the locusts struck at Gardnerville, then they moved here, and then here, and next, here. If they continue in that direction, they'll come straight to Port Edwards. That's where the Indesian grain transports are being loaded. Right. I've got a feeling that somehow those locusts are being controlled by someone who wants to stop that shipment. We better do something fast. We already have. No one knows it, but those ships were loaded last night. This is Port Edwards, sir. The transports are loaded and ready to go. Come on, Jerry. I want to be there when those locusts arrive. Sir. There's no sign of any locusts yet. It's completely deserted. But Sales is wrong. Hidden from the air, a jet motor launch lies silently in the foliage along the shore. Gone. The green ships are gone. I've been tricked. <laughs> well, I have a few tricks too. But that a scouting plane. Well, I'll give it something to report. Still no locusts. Maybe you were wrong, sir. Quiet, Jerry. Listen to that radio signal. There's a launch down there, sir. That must be where it's coming from. That may be what... Uh-oh. Look, Jerry. The locusts! There's millions of them! 
They're getting in the exhausts. I can't control the car. Hold on. I'm going to eject. Hurtling out of the car, Super President hurls himself high in the air, then streaks swiftly down after the out-of-control Omnicar. With a tremendous burst of speed, he catches it, guides it to a safe landing in a nearby field. But even as Super President is speeding in pursuit, the jet-powered cruiser is closing in on its objective. We have sighted the transports, Master. Good. Now they will learn their lesson. Man the cannon, we will blast them out of the ocean. There it is. A radar cannon. They're going to destroy the grain ships. I've got to stop them. Destroy that thing up there while I call the locusts. Good. They're aiming for me. But this time they're in for a little surprise. I better change my substance to vapor. you might be behind this. Who are you? We'll discuss that later. But first, I'm turning off this machine. I don't think so, my mysterious friend. It is you who will be turned off permanently. Good shot, Albertani. You've done the job for me. I'll kill you for that. Don't count on it. This is where your dreams of power end, Albatani. He won't make any more trouble. But he will have plenty of time to plan his next evil plot in jail. sealed bids for the billion-dollar Mars space shot. Uh, why do you think there's something phony about this bid from Apex Aerospace, Mr. President? I'd rather call it something unusual, Jerry. Have you ever heard of Apex? Mm, no, no, sir. Neither have I. And neither has anybody in the space program. In other words, you want me to investigate Apex, Mr. President. And at the same time, check out that pet project of mine. Uh, what's that? Remember the hush-hush work on the midget transmitter? Wow. Uh, how does it work? Swallow it, then begin talking. And it will transmit your voice directly to me. Catch. Let's just call your investigation a dry run. Taxi, Mr. Sales. Good evening, Mr. Sales. What's this? My associate has a very nervous trigger finger. Ten hours and 4,000 miles away, Jerry Sales' captors put down in a secret jungle airfield. <laughs> Welcome to Apex Aerospace, Mr. Sales. So, you've brought me 4,000 miles to show me a building to show you what is under the building. After you, Sales. Hmm. What's this, uh, the five dollar tour? Far from it, the one billion dollar tour. <laughs> Behold. 
behold my defertilizing machine. Corso, a quick demonstration of the defertilizer for our guest. We will watch on the monitor. All right, Corso, activate. I... I saw it, but I... But you find it hard to believe. I have invented a machine that gives me control over every growing plant on Earth. Control over the food that you eat. But to complete my project, I need the one billion dollars your government is spending on the Mars space shot. Once I have that, I can rule the world. <laughs> The president will never give you a penny. No, I think he will give considerably more. Something in the neighborhood of 100 billion pennies. <laughs> uh, um, uh, anybody mind if I take my pill? We're holding him for ransom, and all he's worried about is his pill. Well, you've convinced me, Professor DeCordo. You are a genius, choosing a place in the Andean jungles for a hideout. It's Jerry, talking to DeCordo. Who would ever think of looking for me off for Apex Aerospace in the middle of this wilderness? Good boy, Jerry. Hang on, I'm on my way. You can't go through with this, DeCordo. You can't starve innocent people. Professor, look. Somebody's in the building up above. Turn on the monitor. This spy must be eliminated. Super President. Activate the laser beam. Laser beams. I must change my molecular structure to ozone. The laser beams don't affect him, Professor. Then use the reactive pressurizer. Nothing can withstand that. The walls are closing in on me. I must change to steel if I'm to hold those walls back. up, DeCordo. Your evil plans are finished. What's finished is you. The disintegrator has no effect. Ah, the flamethrower. You can't resist fire. I must change to granite. The flame gun is useless. But this won't be. Mercy! Mercy! A strange word to hear from your lips, Professor DeCordo. Well, Mr. President, uh, everything's wrapped up, except for one minor detail. What's that, Jerry? Uh, the midget transmitter. It's still inside me. Uh, what happens now, a stomach pump? <laughs> Don't worry, Jerry. Within one hour after you swallowed it, your midget transmitter pill dissolved. Of course, if you'd rather be on the safe side. Oh, 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 oh no, sir. Uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs>